Hi, I'm Andrew with NVIDIA and you're watching GeForce Garage. Today we're going to talk about liquid cooling your PC. Liquid cooling is super awesome because it's much more efficient than air cooling. It allows you to overclock your components so you get much more performance. Plus it looks badass. Most of you are probably familiar with flexible tubing, but today we have Richard Suros, the Darth Beavis, my good friend from Red Harbinger to show us how to lay some pipe. Hi, I'm Richard Sorodes, AKA Darth Beavis. When you're liquid cooling your gaming PC, you have several options for the type of tubing you'd like to use. Now, some of you may be familiar with uh, liquid cooling systems using flexible tubing, but this is very easy to use. It does give you a nice aesthetic look. It's clear so you can see the uh, coolant going through there. The next option that we have would be uh, rigid acrylic tubing, uh, PETG. So this is a uh, very, very strong. This works really well. You would heat bend it. Again, you can see the uh, coolant through the tubing. It comes with a really nice effect. If you want to powder coat it, matching with our color scheme, we're going to use rolled copper tubing. We're gonna be able to use some tools to make some nice straight runs and actually do nice bends as well. So this is gonna allow us to uh, pimp this rig out and have it be absolutely beautiful, matching with our color scheme uh, perfectly. So when we're planning out our loop, we have some options. When you're doing water cooling, you need to be flexible, just like you're reading the wind. Sometimes you have to change and improvise and think on the go. So don't be hard set. Maybe you'll have to turn things around. We have some fittings that we can use, 90 degree fittings. We have 45 degree fittings, or we can just use our regular fittings and do total bending to get the look that we're going for. So if you look at the uh, EK water block on the bridge, uh, we have almost a straight shot if we're to use a 90 degree fitting going to the bulkhead. So we'll do that. We'll have just a slight Slight, slight bend. Now the reason that we're not going to do a straight bend is that we would have to jog up and around in several different directions. Number one is very difficult to do with copper tubing. Number two, it does not give us a clean, nice aesthetic look that we're going for. So we're gonna use fittings where we need to and bends uh, where it's more appropriate. The place where it would be better to use a bend would be going from the CPU to one of the radiators. So we'll come up to a 90, we'll come down and do another 90 and we'll go right into the radiator. So you have a lot of options, you know, keep these things in mind, be flexible, and uh, just pay attention to detail. So the first thing we need are fittings. So we're going to use these Primo Chill revolver fittings for rigid tubing. Now these can be used for the acrylic tubing, for the PETG tubing, but also for the copper tubing. The way these operate, simple compression mechanism. They come in three parts. The collar, the next part is an O-ring, and last we have the barb. Okay, so the way that these work, you take your collar, slide it over the tubing. Next, put your O-ring on, and you put on your barb, slide it nice and snug. With the tubing in, you'll push your O-ring onto the top of the barb, and you just twist your collar right on top. What will happen is the collar will cause the O-ring to compress, making a nice waterproof tight seal, and you can just give it a little partial turn with the tool if you need to, and you're good to go. So to do all this bending, obviously I'm, you know, a beefcake, I could do this by hand, but we're gonna use tools instead. We have a variety of tools here. We will not be using all these, but I just wanted to give you a little brief introduction to show you what's possible. So this is a really nice Primo tubing cutter. And then we have a deburring tool that will deburr the inside and the outside of the tubing. So you have a nice clean finish. So this is a really nice uh, ratchet set. They have uh, all different types of mandrels, so you can bend all different sizes of tubing. It's a ratchet type, so it doesn't take quite as much strength, which can do really nice 90 degree angle bends. We're not gonna use that because to use this, it works better if you actually fill the tubing with sand or uh, water and freeze it. If you like to do hand bending versus using a bending tool, you can use a variety of spring benders. So with these, you can slide one over and bend. You could have one inside the tubing and over to bend so the tubes don't collapse. These won't be quite as precise, but if you're just doing a really quick job, uh, you can use these. Benders come in many different price ranges from, you know, $100 up to over $1,000, depending on, you know, if they're pneumatic and what type of mechanism they use. We have the economy size bender. It can do half inch and seven eighth inch, which is really large. Uber powerful, but it takes a lot of muscles. The difficulty of bending depends on many different factors, like the type of copper and the uh, wall thickness. This is the bending that we'll use today. So this one is really good for this more pliable copper tubing. This is an 180 degree bender. You can see that you can 
bend almost all the way around. You can buy these in 90 degree as well, but I think that if you can have one tool that can do multiple angle bends, you may as well just go with this. One of the downsides of using coiled copper tubing is that it's really hard to straighten out. So this company, Quix UK, made this really awesome tube straightener that allows you to get an almost perfect straight piece and then you can go through and, and bend it to the shape that you want. Okay, so the uh, first thing we need to do is we need to cut off a piece of copper tubing. So we're gonna use our handy dandy tubing cutter. So we'll just put it ever so slightly on there. And this is just a continual process where you just keep tightening it up a little bit more each turn, making the blade go a little bit deeper. So you just keep turning it and tightening it ever so slightly. and it is almost through, there we go. So the next thing we'll do is we'll use our deburring tool to deburr the inside and the outside of the cut. This is important because you don't want to have pieces of metal floating through and also some fittings will catch on the rough edges. Okay. So now we have a piece of tubing, it is not straight. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just straighten it out by hand as best we can get it without the tool. We're gonna use our straightener from Quix UK. The hardest part is getting it started, but once you get it started, just work your back and forth motion. So now you see we have a straight piece where before we had a curved piece. So the next thing we'll do is we'll do our bend. Now, if you look at this bender, this allows you to bend 45, have 90 and 180. So you just match it up and then you just keep bending until the zero marks up with the degree of bend that you're trying to achieve. So for this, we want to do a 90. So we'll open up the tool, we'll place the tubing in against this back brace. We're gonna line up the zeros and then we're gonna pull this all the way across to the zeros at the 90. And when you do this, you want to have a nice, smooth motion. You don't want to jerk around a lot so you don't leave as many marks on the tubing. So we're just going to squeeze around the corner. We're going to have that zero line up with the 90. There we go. Now you will have spring back when you're bending so you can go just a tad further because uh, it will bend back in that way. You'll offset. Pull that out, and now you have a 90 degree bend. Okay, now that we have this bent, we're ready to measure, cut it, and fit it into the cross test. So 99 bends left to go. Here's one tube done. All right, well, that was pretty straightforward. Well, we did take a right turn. So let's get the rest of the tubes bent and installed, see what it looks like. All right. done, but let's get the powder coated. Man, this looks awesome, dude. It looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and what's super cool about powder coating is you can choose any color of the rainbow to really match your build. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of different design elements, but that allows us to tie everything in and unify it in one beautiful package. Rich, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate your help. It was a pleasure. Don't forget to check out our next episode where we're gonna make this thing look even more badass with custom lighting. Thanks for watching GeForce Garage, the ultimate resource center for designing, building, and customizing your GTX PC.